Imagine a car ripping down the track so fast it feels like it's bending time itself. Over 308 miles per hour, that's more than most jets at takeoff. You might have heard names like Bugatti or Koenigsegg claiming the crown, but here's the curveball. A new machine just upended the status quo and it's electric. Yes, the fastest car in the world title has changed hands, and I'm going to show you exactly how they proved it and where the claims fall apart. Stick around by the end, you'll know which car truly deserves to wear the crown, and why most of what you've heard might just be high. Let's get into it. You know how people argue about which car is the fastest and end up talking past each other. That's because fastest means a lot of different things. So before we dive into contenders, we have to agree on what question we're answering. Otherwise, it's like racing bikes and cars and saying winner without saying what track. So here's what we need to nail down. First, when I say fastest car in the world, I don't mean some one-off prototype or a drift car or a rocket on wheels. I'm talking production ones that could be bought by a customer, registered, driven on roads, at least in some places, not stripped down to only a race frame. The record car has to be essentially the same as what a buyer could own, tires, engine, body, no wild custom tweaks that no one else gets. Now, that already throws out a bunch of flashy claims. Some cars claim 310 miles per hour or more, but we never see them tested under fair, repeatable conditions. So we'll only count claims that are verified by independent measurement GPS, timing equipment, observers, runs in both directions to cancel wind, etc. If someone claims a top speed but doesn't show evidence, that's a red flag. Also, to be fair, we need to control for conditions. Track surface, temperature, wind, altitude. A car doing 300 miles per hour on a perfect day at a test track is very different from someone claiming the same speed on a hot, uneven road. So we give more weight to runs done in controlled settings. And one more thing. Sometimes manufacturers play with theoretical top speed based on simulations or wind tunnel work. That's fun, I love it. But in this video, I won't crown a car as fastest just because the engineers say we think it might hit 320 miles per hour. I want proof in the real world. So to sum up, here's our working rule. The fastest car in this video is the production car that has a verifiable documented top speed run under fair test conditions and where the test car is essentially the same spec as ones customers could buy. Cool now that we know what game we're playing, we can go pick contenders without getting tricked by smoke and mirrors. You might think there's one obvious choice, but no, the battlefield is messy. Let's meet three beasts that really deserve to be in the conversation. I'll show you their claims, their receipts and where they trip up. Then you decide which one really holds up. First up, the Yamaha U9 Extreme. This one is making waves. In September 2025, it clocked 308.4 miles per hour at the ATP Papenburg track in Germany. That beats the old record by a fair margin. It's powered by four electric motors, each pushing insane power, built on a 1200 volt system. But before you crown it king, there are footnotes. BYD is limiting production to just 30 units. Also, some critics point out that not all of its claimed specs may reflect what you or I could buy. Still, the proof run seems solid and it's currently the boldest claim backed by data. Next, the Bugatti Chiron Supersport 300 Plus. A legend. Back in 2019, its test driver Andy Wallace pushed it to 304.773 miles per hour at the Era Lessian track in Germany. That run was verified by TUV, the German Inspection Authority. For years, that was the benchmark. Bugatti even built just 30 production models of the Supersport 300 Plus variant. Its engine is a beast, a reworked W16, tuned to push not only top speed but stability at that extreme. Downsides, that record was done with a pre-production or semi-prototype version, not always with the exact specs of the road-going car. Also, Bugatti themselves limit the live top speed of customer cars. 
Still, it's a heavyweight contender. It held the crown for years. Then there's Koenigsegg Jesko Absolute. This one lurks in the shadows. It hasn't done a fully validated top speed run yet. But its theoretical potential is wild. Estimates suggest it could push 330 miles per hour. Many analysts and Koenigsegg fans talk about this as their bet for the next record. But here's the catch. It's mostly in simulations and wind tunnel modeling, with fewer real runs under verification. So it's a bit like a promising sprinter who's never stepped on the track. Still, you can't ignore it. The engineering, the drag coefficient, the gearing all point in the direction of this thing could break it. You might also hear names like SSC Tuatara or Hennessy Venom F5 thrown around. SSC once claimed approximately 331 miles per hour, but had to retract it due to measurement errors. That's a cautionary tale. Hennessy claims it's built to exceed 300 miles per hour, but hasn't yet produced a run that beats the current leaders. So I'll keep them in mind, but they're not front runners right now. As you see, each has strengths and blemishes. Yang Wang is bold and recent. Bugatti is proven and historic. Jesco is the wild card. It could leapfrog them all. Now, knowing these contenders, we can dig into the heavyweight battles, see whose proof holds up and whose claim is just smoke and mirrors. You remember how I said we need proof, not just hype? Well, this is where we dig into the guts of the leading claim, see if it actually holds up under scrutiny. The current top dog, by the strongest evidence, is the Yang Wang U9 Extreme. Its big claim, 308.4 miles per hour. Let's walk through how they did it and why I believe it might really be valid, but also where doubts still sneak in. When and where did the run happen? It was done at the ATP Papenburg High Speed Oval in Germany. The driver was Marc Basseng, a seasoned racer who's no stranger to pushing limits. The speed result was 308.4 miles per hour. This run is being cited widely as the new top production car speed record. What makes this run more believable than some others? Let's break down the evidence. The run was measured by ATP, a recognized automotive testing facility. Because they're not random YouTube garage folks, their reputation adds weight. The report says the car uses four electric motors on a 1200 volt architecture, which is far ahead of many rivals. To hit such extreme speeds, Yang Wang made changes. They downsized wheels, used wider semi-slick tires on the front, tweaked the track width. Also, the car is very close to production spec. The brand says it will build at most 30 units of the extreme version. That helps its legitimacy. If it were just a one-off prototype, we'd be more skeptical. But there are some caveats, some shadows we can't ignore. It appears the run may have been done in one direction only, rather than doing two runs in opposite directions and averaging. That leaves room for wind or slope to skew the result. Some skeptics argue that even though the car is close to production spec, tweaks might have been made for that test parts, cooling, tires specifically for that run. That's natural in these record attempts. Also, production is super limited, only 30 cars. That's fine, but it means verifying that what you could buy is exactly what did the run is harder. Then there's the question of repeatability. One great run is impressive, but can it do it again? Can someone else verify it independently? Now, before we crown a champion, let's talk about the cracks, the warnings, the controversies, the maybe it's not as clean as it looks bits because in this world, the devil's in the details. First off, one-way versus two-way runs. A lot of claims are based on a car running only in one direction. Wind, slope, track incline. They all bias the result. The cleaner way is run it one way, then back the other, average them, cancel out those tricks. The Yang Wang Yu 9 Extremes 308.33 miles per hour run was in a single direction. Some media sources say as much. So skeptics will point out, is that enough to call it the fastest? Second, limited production. The extreme is extremely exclusive, only 30 units will be made. When you're doing records with cars that hardly exist, it's harder to verify whether what you could buy is truly what was tested. Was the test version special? Maybe. 
Third, tire limits and safety margins. At these speeds, tires are right on the edge. Some sources speculated that in the Yangwang test, the tires might have been already under load limits or pushed near their threshold. Also, in tests, BYD claimed their tires could sustain 300 miles per hour drive tests for minutes, but real runs are only a few seconds. Do conditions hold? Do the tires flex, overheat, or deform? That's a risk every record car faces. Fourth, data integrity, video sync, measurement errors. History is full of bright claims that later crumbled. Remember the SSC Tuatara claimed 331 miles per hour? They later admitted the video overlay was inaccurate and that they never hit 331 or even 301 miles per hour. Their data sync between telemetry and video was disputed. Also, critics used landmark timings in video footage to show it was physically impossible based on speed versus distance. That fiasco is a red flag. Just because a number is huge doesn't mean it's real. Fifth, repeatability and independent verification. A single run is powerful, but I want to see it done again by someone else under the same rules. If only the builder or their team has the data, there's room for doubt. Can someone else replicate it? Can an independent agency confirm? Some claims fall apart when that test is attempted. Sixth, conditions and environment advantage. Perfect weather, track surface, humidity, altitude, all can help or hurt. A car doing 490 on a perfect day might get 470 under less ideal conditions. If a record run happens on a premium, highly prepped test track under ideal skies, that's not the same as everyday road conditions. Claims sometimes hide how ideal the day was. Seventh, design tweaks for the record run. Manufacturers often make small changes for those record runs, lighter parts, special cooling, stronger components just for the test. If those parts don't come in the production versions, the record may not reflect what customers get. That's why I insist the test car be essentially the same as a buyer's car. Eighth, scaling and longevity. Let's say the car hits 308 miles per hour once, but will it do that again tomorrow? After 100 runs, will the engine, drivetrain, tires degrade? If performance drops, then that fastest car title is fragile. So yes, while the Yang Wang run is bold and loaded with impressive specs, we can't ignore these interpretive shadows. If any one of these points leans against it, someone else might challenge the title next month. At this point, after all the contenders, the deep dive and the weak spots, I've got to pick a champ. Based on what we've seen, here's how I see things. I believe the Yang Wang Yu 9 Extreme is the strongest current contender to wear the fastest production car crown. Why? Because its claimed 308.4 miles per hour run is supported by a real test at ATP Pappenburg with a named driver and serious engineering backing. Let me lay out the top three as I see them with pros and cons, then explain why Yang Wang edges ahead. Number one, Yang Wang U9, extreme pros, strong test, full public data, advanced electric architecture, four motors, 1,200 volt system, cons, very limited production, just 30 units, and questions remain about one direction run versus two-way averaging. Number two, Bugatti Chiron Super Sport 300 plus pros, historic benchmark, TUV verification, solid brand legacy. Its 304.773 miles per hour record was widely respected. Cons, the test car may have been more optimized than customer versions. Bugatti limited the speed in standard cars for safety. Number three, Koenigsegg Jesco Absolute Pros. Incredible theoretical potential, estimated greater than 330 miles per hour. Excellent engineering foundation. Cons. No fully verified record, yet under identical independent conditions. It's still a promise rather than a delivered fact. So why Yang Wang? Because compared to Bugatti, it pushes further and does so with modern EV tech. Compared to Jesco, it's not just talk, it has some real measured legs. If this blew your mind even a little, 
do me a solid, hit that like button. It tells me you're into this kind of deep car nerd stuff and it helps more people find this. Drop me a comment. Which car you think is going to smash this record next 5 miles per hour? More? 10? Or maybe some wild EV we haven't even heard of yet? I want to see your pics. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and tap the bell so you don't miss when I dig into fastest EVs versus fastest gas cars next. I've got surprises in store. Also, if you enjoyed this, share it with someone who's all about speed. Your car crazy friend, your cousin, heck, even your grandma if she digs fast things. Let's get more people asking the fun questions. Oh, one more thing. I'll be doing a follow-up where I test the top fan suggestions people leave in comments. If your pick gets featured, you'll see it on screen. So don't hold back, make your voice heard. Thanks for riding along. Buckle up. Next video is gonna be a thrill.